May 8, 2025. A high-stakes encounter unfolds in the skies over South Asia. Over 125 fighter jets from India and Pakistan lock horns in one of the most intense aerial standoffs since 2019. But this time, it's not just about pilots. It's about processors. India's much-celebrated Rafals, equipped with Meteor missiles and AESA radars, are challenged by Pakistan's newer J-10C fighters, powered by cutting-edge Chinese technology. What tilted the balance? A suite of AI-powered electronic warfare systems and real-time tactical data sharing between ground stations and fighters, all part of China's integrated warfighting doctrine, now embedded in PAF. As Rafals locked in for kills, they were hit by an invisible fog, radar jamming, spoofed heat signatures, and decoys generated by adaptive AI. Indian jets were successfully targeted and downed. The PAF's Chinese origin targeting AI filtered enemy signatures faster than human operators could. The AI-guided PL-15 missiles, with their extended range and electronic counter-counter measures, hunted the Rafales beyond visual range. This wasn't just a dogfight. It was a digital duel, a turning point in South Asian air warfare, where hardware met hyperintelligence. Across the globe, militaries are accelerating toward autonomous targeting systems powered by artificial intelligence. From predictive strike capabilities to deepfake voice cloning used in psychological warfare, the battlefield is becoming less human and far more calculated. The United States, China, Russia, and even mid-sized military powers are investing heavily in decision-making algorithms that can track, lock, and eliminate targets with minimal human input. The reaction time is no longer measured in seconds, but in nanoseconds. We are entering an age where machines won't just assist in war. They will lead it. Nowhere was this more evident than in the Gaza conflict of 2024, where the Israeli Defense Forces deployed AI systems not just for targeting, but for prioritizing kill lists. Known internally as the Gospel, the AI scanned phone records, facial data, and location tags to generate real time strike recommendations. Thousands of targets were processed, locked, and executed within minutes. But the cost was staggering. Entire residential blocks were flattened. Ambulances, shelters, and even schools weren't spared. Consequently, the IDF destroyed more than 360,000 buildings, indiscriminately killed over 50,000, and injured over 113,500 Palestinians, most of whom were innocent women and children. Ironically, the indiscriminate killing of non-combatants is explicitly forbidden under the Fourth Geneva Convention of 1949, which mandates the protection of civilians during times of war and occupation. This raised serious questions at the United Nations, where Article 51 of the UN Charter, which upholds the right to self-defense while emphasizing the protection of civilians, was cited repeatedly in emergency sessions. Human rights observers warned that automation without accountability risks turning international law into a mere suggestion. The future of warfare isn't just about smarter bombs. It's about faster decisions, colder calculations, and lower accountability. When a machine picks a target, who bears the moral burden? As autonomous systems evolve, the line between soldier and algorithm blurs. Swarms of drones, self-firing artillery, AI-operated submarines, all are coming online faster than global ethics committees can respond. And while militaries race toward efficiency, civilians stand in the crossfire of automation. The cost of next-gen warfare may not be borne by the victors, but by the invisible and unarmed. In a world where war is waged by code and combat is outsourced to circuits, one question remains. Who programs the conscience?